Nick, great to see you. Let's uh, just kick things off with, uh, you know, they didn't do anything, but, you know, are, is Harihika Kuroda sclerotic uh, to the point of dogma, or was there just simply no need to do anything? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, the, the, there was that feeling of uh, all of a sudden, like a bolt from the blue, nothing. Um, and you sort of feel, is this part of work from home? <laughs> they've decided that start, they've got a whole stack of these, uh, um, these uh, press announcements for each of the months until, until he walks out the door in, uh, in April next year, and he just sort of photocopies them and, and changes the date on the top of it. <laughs> I think that's probably not completely illogical, is what he's saying is, look, what do you expect uh, Kuroda to do? Do you expect him to say, um, sorry about the four and a half trillion dollars, we've changed our mind, it doesn't work? Do you expect him to do a, a George Bush kind of uh, speech of saying, mission accomplished? Well, it isn't accomplished. Uh, the rest of the world's got plenty of inflation, but Japan is uh, temporarily up about two and a half percent, but take out fresh food and, uh, uh, and uh, um, energy and we're at 0.8 percent. So um, there's no particular reason for him to, to change his his policies. Now, when we change over to the new governor, that may well be uh, completely different. But I think for the, the, the time being, what do we expect out of him? That's uh, entirely as, um, uh, as you would expect from his game plan. Well, I mean, the, the situation has changed quite radically since their last meeting, especially, of course, the, the fortunes of the currency. Is it a, a situation where perhaps it's better to wait and see? They must welcome the currency being weak, too. It does a bit of the heavy lifting for him. Uh, absolutely. So, of course, there are always going to be people who don't like a weak currency and people who don't like a, a strong currency. But net net for uh, for Japan, a weaker yen is uh, is better. And you, you don't even have to be um, an exporter for that. As long as you have a market which is um, a, a free market, and, and therefore, if you raise your prices too much, the um, the, the product flows in from overseas. Then um, all you're seeing is well, you've got a uh, say you're an oil refiner, for example, you buy. 100, you sell it 100 and, uh, 120. You've got costs of, uh, um, of 15, so you make a five dollar um, uh, profit. But then the yen um, weakens from 115 to uh, uh, to 135. Your costs just shrunk by 15 percent, and your profits um, just increased by 44 percent. Happy days. So there are a lot of, um, of industries in exactly that kind of situation who say, Thanks very much. Now, of course, the consumer will, on the face of it, say, Yeah, but some of the things like like my energy costs are going up, so yes, they are. Logically, the companies ought to be uh, ought to be paying more as a result. After all, they're making more uh, more money, but they haven't. I mean, wages have been flat for a for a very long time. And if you look at uh, corporate profit, so you can see within the um, the domestic companies, employee uh, pay has gone absolutely sideways for 25 years. But corporate profits have tripled over that time. So now is the time for the, the, the Oliver Twist statement to say, please, sir, I want some more. Uh, Nick, uh, of course, the BOJ did say it must continue to watch FX uh, uh, movements. I want to read you the code. It is necessary to pay due attention to developments in financial and foreign exchange markets and their impact on Japan's economic activity and prices. Uh, what's the worst case scenario and how are you assessing the risk of a run on the yen? Well, surely the uh, the yen is a function uh, at the moment. It's running with the uh, the U.S. Japan yield differential, and with the the Japanese um, yield uh, at the moment locked, that means it's a straight function of uh, of uh, U.S. rates. But U.S. rates really are a function of of global growth expectations. Now, for the time being, the the ten years right the way up there. But ultimately, uh, as we go towards um, um, a, a slowdown globally, possibly even uh, recession, you would have thought that uh, U.S. rates will come off a little bit, and the result would be that the um, that the yen might strengthen a little bit. So, from the start of the year, I've said Japan's going to be a great market to be in. Uh, why wouldn't it be a great market? It's got a lot of stimulus going through, and certainly that's been the case. So, in, in uh, current um, in, in local market terms. Topics is only off 8% and the S&P is off, uh, was it 23%? But of course, we've had the, uh, the currency weakening. I said at the start of the year, you're going to have to hedge that. And, uh, and that's uh, precisely the right thing to do. I said from the start of the year, it'll go to 125. It's gone through that. Ultimately, I think it'll, uh, it'll come back a, a little bit in the, uh, the opposite direction. 
I'm curious, Nick. I mean, the BOJ says it will keep buying at 0.25% every business day. Will it continue to be successful in putting a lid, putting a, a cap on, uh, on yields? What's your take? Um... <laughs> The central bank's ability to continue to drive up bond prices by buying them is almost un unlimited. Now, there are some people on the other side of the trade who've decided to take the widowmaker trade of, of shorting the, uh, the bond market, and, and a lot of people have been carried out, so I, I think they'll, they will leave head held high and feet held still higher. Um, but as a, as a person shorting a stock, your, your potential losses are, uh, are unlimited. Who's going to win between the two of those? I think that the central bank's going to continue to uh, to buy at least until they change uh, governors in April of next year. Uh, Nick, it reminds me of Buzz Lightyear, doesn't it? Uh, to infinity and beyond, I guess. Uh, but you know, more, <laughs> more seriously here, where you know there must be a line in the sand, surely. And I guess maybe that line in the sand is, is time uh, with the new governor coming in in April. But you know, are they likely to pick somebody as adventurous as Haruhika Kuroda? And I speak that, uh, I say that in relative terms. Sure. Obviously, um, for the first time in a very long time, we've got a, uh, a governor who's the, uh, from the Ministry of Finance. Now, the uh, BOJ has historically been a lot more cautious on what they do in monetary terms because they look back at the problems of the early uh, post-war years and the, uh, the interwar years, just uh, in the 1930s. So they've got a lot of experience of, uh, of hyperinflation, and, and they're worried about it. So I would have thought that the, the two main candidates for uh, the governor of the Bank of Japan, um, Nakaso and Amami, both of them died in the wool uh, BOJ guys. Both of them have made comments about the impact of, of um, QE and affinity on the, uh, the financial system. Um, and so I, I think the chances are that the Lex... And, of course, you've also got to look at the politics. And, and there was that Kyodor uh, poll of, uh, recently saying 59% of people think that uh, um, Kuroda is not super, suitable for the governor of Bank of Japan. I'll take that with a bit of a, a pinch of salt. But there are definitely comments out there saying this weaker yen is, is causing inflation. We've got uh, upper house elections on the 10th of July. Of course, what we're going to get is uh, pressure to say, let's pick a... Um, a new central bank governor who's not quite as, uh, uh, as extreme as, uh, as Kuroda has been. And I, I would have thought either of those two people, uh, Nakaso or uh, Amamiya, would be, here, would be just fine in that regard.